when it comes to doing the things that Yah has required of us, first things are always to be considered first. I this Barry Phillips with 10-minute Torah, day number two of the double Torah portion, still today in Vayachal. We are in still chapter 35 of the book of Shemot or Exodus, and let's read two verses today. Verse 2 says, Work is done for six days, but on the seventh day it shall be set apart to you, a Shabbat of rest to Yahweh. Anyone doing work on it is to be put to death. Do not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Shabbat day. So, Shabbat is Shabbat and will always be Shabbat, and it will never stop being Shabbat. The context that we read this command is about constructing the house of Elohim, as important as that is, so that Yah may have a dwelling place in the midst of Israel. As necessary, vital, and important as it is, Yah is not relinquished on this. You've sinned with the gold calf. I've I've forgiven your sin, uh, and I'm recommissioning you. The, The blueprints don't change one speck because of what's happened in the interim. My command is still my command. So build my house. However, the building of Yah's house and all of its importance does not and never will supersede Shabbat. Why is that? Shabbat, as we learn in last week's Torah portion, is a sign. Oat, O-H-T is the transliteration. Oat, it is a sign forever between Yah and his people. If you're going to come down or start down the Hebraic roots emphasis of study, looking again to the Hebraic mindset that all of the text from the beginning of Bereshit or Genesis all the way to the end of Revelation, everything written in there, even the letters of Rav Shaul, they're all crafted from a Hebraic mind a Hebraic worldview and understanding of things, everything. That's why we put the emphasis on getting back to that vantage point, that is to look at the scripture as it was originally written and try to understand that it has an application across a variety of cultures and people groups, but it's all about bringing us back to the root of who we are called to be. Shabbat is the sign of such a people. It is the first sign. If a person is not willing to embrace Shabbat, they're not really going to worry about what food they eat, what days they celebrate, what commands that they might or might not keep, whether they accept the the Torah is legit or not. None of that's going to really sink in and become at the level of importance that is necessary until you start with Shabbat. Once you go to Shabbat and you start resting and being refreshed with him, sundown Friday night to sundown Saturday night, it is not only a reorienting of your body clock, your body will actually start looking forward on Friday afternoon for the beginning of Shabbat, and you'll yearn to run toward it. But also your mind, and even more importantly, your spirit. Once you step into that realm, that that spiritual place of Shabbat, it's an amazing thing to to feel the, the difference come over you as you breathe deep, a sigh is released, You sense the refreshing, and you acknowledge this is his day. Now, in our Western culture, we keep making justifications of how that we go this way or that way and what we do and don't do. 
Uh, I remember when we first, very first, began to look at Shabbat and see its legitimacy. Someone was discussing it with me, and we were talking about the text where Yeshua said in Mark 2, 27, I believe, that Shabbat was created for man and not man for Shabbat. And we were talking about uh, the various aspects of Shabbat. And I said, so he wants me to rest and be refreshed. I guess I can go play golf. <laughs> uh, the one I was in discussion with laughed and looked at me and said, no, you don't go play golf. That's about you. It's supposed to be about him. So we justify what we do. Well, it's important that I get this done. It's important that I do it. It has kingdom consequences. It's all about, you know, I'm doing something for him. And that's just it. It's the doing. It's doing that is the problem. It's supposed to be being. You don't do rest. You become a part of his rest. And it's a hard line to figure out. In the book of 1 Samuel, the principle is similarly applied to a different situation. King Shaul has uh, gathered people in preparation for an upcoming battle. And he's concerned and he's waiting on the prophet Shemuel to come and to present offerings before Yah that things may go with them on the battlefield. And uh, 1 Samuel 13, verse 8 and following, he, that is King Shaul, waited for seven days according to the appointment with Shemuel, but Shemuel did not come to Gilgal, and the people were scattered from him. And Shaul said, bring an ascending offering and peace offerings here to me. And he offered the, uh, the ascending offering. And it came to be, as he finished offering this ascending offering, look, Shemuel came. Shaul went out to meet him, to bless him. Shemuel said, what have you done? Shaul said, here's that same excusing pattern of thought. Because I saw that the people were scattered from me and that you did not come within the days of appointed and that the Philistines gathered at Michmash. So I said, the Philistines are going to come down on me at Gilgal and I've not appeased the face of Yahweh. So I felt compelled and offered an ascending offering. Shemuel said to Shaul, You have been foolish. You have not guarded the command of Yahweh Yorahim, which he commanded you. For now Yahweh would have established your reign over Israel forever, but now your reign is not going to stand. And Yahweh's going to look for somebody else. This feeling of, well, I feel driven. I feel compelled. I feel it's urgent. I feel it's necessary. It's, it's something that's got to be done. We can all, all of us, especially in our Western culture application of Shabbat, and there's a whole other subject, get busy and feel pressured. Uh, discussing about this just yesterday at the time of this recording, uh, it says do not build a fire or start a fire or kindle a fire in your dwellings. So don't start from scratch and build all of the fire up and go to the work of kindling the wood and, and arranging the wood and lighting the wood and building the fire and establishing the fire. That's work. Don't do that. In preparation for uh, ministry at, at House of David, I oftentimes leave myself too much to do on Shabbat morning. And I feel compelled and urged. You got to get this done. You got to make it happen. We arrive and, uh, you know, just the journey to, you know, we're not in a culture where you can uh, go to the local gathering place, either the house of study or a synagogue, and it's within walking distance. Most everybody, if you gather at a location as a congregation, you got to drive to get there. And what happens when we're driving? We're frustrated at the people on the road. They won't get out of the way. Time constraints. We've got to hurry. Got to go. Got to go. May Yah teach us Shabbat because Shabbat is more important than anything else that we do. 
Let's focus on being on Shabbat instead of the doing. Yah, help us all. We'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, Shalom.